Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. Thank you for joining us today. I'm your host, Neil Howard. ALS, or Lou Gehrig's disease, affects as many as 30,000 Americans with an estimated 5,000 or so new cases diagnosed every year here in the United States. Our guests are Chuck and Stacy Schretzman. Chuck is a veteran, Army veteran, and West Point football player, and his wife Stacy is also a West Point graduate. Both of them are here to talk with us about living with ALS and advocating for greater awareness and further medical research. Thanks for coming to the program, both Chuck and Stacy Schretzman. No worries. No, no problem. So, Chuck, Army veteran, a combat vet, you were, I think it was shortly after you took a civilian job that uh, you were diagnosed. Is that correct? Yes, I was diagnosed in April of 15, 2015. I just retired from the Army in November of 2014. Yeah, I, I the diagnosis came six months after I left the Army. Was there anything prior to you leaving service that um, you noticed later on that may have been a problem, something that maybe you didn't pay attention to, or it, anything that may have tipped you off looking back? Yeah, um, you know, yeah yes, there was a lot of things. Um, looking back, I knew um, I had this for a long time. Mm-hmm. Our problems for a long time. I'll let Stacy um, kind of talk about it. So, you know, hindsight is always 2020, Neil. Um, I think um, in about the 2013 mark, after he'd returned home from Afghanistan, um, he, you know, later on in the year, he started to have some trouble um, in 2013, 2014, standing at the position of attention. His balance was off. And, you know, this, this is a Division One athlete that he has kept himself, you know, over the course of the last you know, 20, 30 years, he's kept himself in peak physical condition, Absolutely. he's an airborne mm-hmm. ranger. Um, and so it was really out of the ordinary that his gait was starting to suffer when he was trying to run. Um, two of our children uh, were actually cadets at West Point, too, when we were stationed there. Um, and Chuck was the executive officer to the superintendent. Mm-hmm. You know, pretty, pretty difficult job, you know, pretty high off tempo. And You know, he was trying to get out there to do PT with his two kids who were cadets there at the time. And the kids would come back after a run with their dad. They'd just be like, something's off, mom. Dad's dad's running isn't what it used to be. Yeah. You know, hindsight, hindsight's 2020. He started very early on having fasciculations, you know, that that kind of rippling underneath the skin um, in his lower calves. And he was just like, you know, so those were kind of the early on way at the very, you know, beginning before we even had a clue what was going on. Were there any misdiagnoses early on when you uh, began to go to the doctor to, you know, find out what was going on or was it pinpointed immediately? So, um, you know, right away when he came home from, uh, from Afghanistan, you know, he, he just kind of felt kind of, just kind of heavy. So he kind of went to an ear, nose and throat doctor. They kind of discounted it. They sent him home and said, no, you're, it's, it's no big deal. Um, and, and, and he felt fine and everything was great. And he got distracted with work. And then a couple of years later, um, it got to the point where his balance was starting to suffer. He started to trip up going downstairs. And so right before we actually gave up, you know, right before we actually gave up the uniform, you know, you, you always, you go on terminal leave at the end of, and you have like 30 days leave before you actually go on full retirement status. It got to the point, and, you know, that was about the time the Ice Bucket Challenge was happening, and I just typed in a couple of symptoms that Chuck was having. This was the summer of 2014, August, September, and it all came up ALS. And so I freaked out. You know, we called Walter Reed. We went down to Walter Reed Medical Center. They got us right in. They put together a a, a, a team of neurologists, they, t- they took a look at him and they discounted ALS right away mm-hmm. and they diagnosed him with sensory neuronopathy. And the reason why um, the doctors just weren't going to let Chuck carry the football on an ALS diagnosis, because his EMG came back fine, he was having no muscle weakness to speak of in any of his, his extremities. He, you know, they said, this is an ALS, this is just something sensory because he had that heavy head feeling that yeah, yeah. that feeling yeah. that that pressure in his brain has there been um suggested any link i mean um more than 20 years in the in the army 
uh, and you get out, you, you're taking a civilian job. You're a military family, Stacy. Is there any link between military service and ALS? Well, I know that there's there's been a number of studies out there, and they're saying that veterans are twice as likely. Now, whether or not that means that the Army is just doing a better job, the military is doing a better job of gathering data and gathering information because soldiers, you know, they've got shot records, they've mm-hmm. got they've got really good track of their soldiers, whether or not our reporting agencies are just, just do a better job or if it could be linked to think of think of all the environmental things these soldiers are going through. And I, this is just Stacy and Chuck just talking back and forth over the kitchen table. Think of all of the environmental Things like Chuck was breathing in like burning tires in Afghanistan. Yes, yes. You know, you know, Afghanistan, Iraq, he was in Haiti. He was in Haiti for a couple months. Just, I think, the environmental concerns that, that, that our soldiers face, not to mention all of the crazy inoculations, which we're grateful for because they protect us from so much. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you got to... Not not to mention being hit by a couple IEDs and getting your bell rung. You know, there, there's that a playing uh, football meal, playing football back at West Point. I mean, we I don't I I can't remember any concussions, but I my bell rung a lot. <laughs> so there were no there were no concussions actually diagnosed, yeah. but yeah. you know he had the whole. You know, coaches counting how many fingers am I holding up, and yeah. you know get back out there, which is just the way things were. You're here to advocate for more awareness and uh, much more research into uh, ALS. I, I saw the, the uh, one of the uh, installments on, on YouTube. Talk about this uh, this initiative behind ALS. So, uh, Cytokinetics, uh, through a very good, uh, through a contact of Chuck's, Ron, ALS PDI, and Ron Goldman, yeah. um, kind of put, they wanted, they wanted to do a story of a family you know, kind of somebody like Chuck who, you know, who had contracted the disease. And so they contacted us and we were more than happy. Anything to get the word out, anything to reach your listeners, you know, any ALS patients out there that are, that, you know, they're having muscle fasciculations, they're having weakness in their extremities, anything to help them, you know, get to a diagnosis sooner, that, that is really something that we're, we would love to advocate for. Um, Also, you know, if patients are out there and they're being diagnosed, you know, a typical patient passes away within three to five years, you know, so it's hard to get a really good database. Um, so we really like to advocate strongly answer ALS. for the answer ALS registry, you know, getting a database of, of actual people giving blood so they can actually have some sort of a data bank of, of patients. But Cytokinetics is, is this wonderful company out in California. They brought us out there to, they're the ones that contracted to do this, this video of us. Pyrosymptom is a new medication that is getting ready to come out. It's, I guess it's in an advanced phase three yeah, trial. Right. They're getting ready to get all their data published later at the, at the end of this year. And it could be the actual next big therapy to come out as early as 2018, yeah. spring of 2018, exciting, exciting. helping with, oh, it's very exciting, helping with breathing function. And, you know, a lot of people say, why can't, why is it that they just can't come up with new drug therapies? Why can't they come up with, it's not that easy. We were able to go to cytokinetics. We were able to tour the plant and we were able to see the experiments that they were doing hands-on. It's literally like finding a needle in a haystack. And, and it, it, really, it really put an image in our minds of, of why it's so challenging for these companies to come up with these drug therapies. So they've really uh, stepped up with this uh, Behind ALS documentary series. Uh, I understand, it, as you said, it uh, aims to elevate awareness of ALS and highlight its impact on the patients and the, uh, the caregivers, you know, such, such as yourself. Uh, the first video in the series, I do believe it's titled Soldier On. Is that correct? Yes, yes. it is. The one thing we just started a new drug called Radicava. It came out in May. Um, actually, Neil came out on my birthday, May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. And so my number in the college was 552. You know, it's, all, it's all coincidence. He's, but, yeah, he's number 55, and it uh, came out on May 5th. Yeah, so, wow. you know, it's got to be a cure. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, so, yeah. Radicava is the. Um, 
the thing in the analyze dog in 22 years. So I'm when I take in 14 days in a row. I'm on day six right now. Right. So I go to VA every day pretty much for 14 days straight and get an IV for an hour. And so that, hopefully that's going to help us slow down the disease by 30%. Yeah, something. So that's a very positive thing for veterans. Absolutely, that the yes. VA, the VA really took it by the by the reins, Radicava, because you know anytime the CDC comes out with a new drug and they administer that drug, you know there's a lot of there's a big learning curve. Yes, and the VA has really really stepped up its game and it, it's getting this drug to its veterans, and we're just very very grateful. But we'd like to learn some more. Where can we go online and learn about the uh, Behind ALS initiative? And also uh, check out the uh, video series. Uh, I know it's on YouTube. Is it uh, located elsewhere as well? You can go to cytokinetics.com. There's also... On YouTube. Yeah, on YouTube. Yes. And you can follow Cytokinetics on Facebook. And there'll be a series of videos on ALS on the Cytokinetics webpage. Well, I thank you both for talking with me today. It's been a pleasure. We're going to win, Neil. We're going to win. Hoo-wah. 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 Thank you, Neil. Thank you. Thank you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Transcripts and audio of the program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm. You can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, and download at SoundCloud, and be sure and visit our affiliates page at hpr.fm.